Hey everyone, Pastor George here with our Theolog uh, mailbag for today, uh, Thursday. And here we have a question from Claude Heller, and he asked, Would you share with us a question or two from the ordination exams you are now grading? Uh, maybe include an unusual answer and how you would answer differently. So uh, what he's referring to is uh, two weeks ago, I was on a working vacation, I guess you could say, where I wasn't at the church or doing like normal stuff, but I was just doing, I wasn't doing theologues and stuff like that, but I was doing uh, grading ordination exams. Um, and unfortunately, I can't share what was on those exams and things like that because of confidentiality uh, and to make sure that the exam process is fair and things like that, just in case anyone happens to see these videos. So I can't, I can't share exactly what the questions were, but, um, I will talk a little bit about the ordination exams because I think that unless you ever served on a uh, call, you know, calling committee or, uh, or, you know, committee on ministry or committee for the preparation of ministry, right? You probably have never had to interact with the ordination exams. So they might be a little arcane and unusual for people who, who have never worked with them before. So I'll explain a little bit about them and I'll give an example of a question that I could have gotten or like things that, that come up on them, if that makes sense. So there are uh, five ordination exams. There's Bible, polity, theology, um, worship, and exegesis. Um, so Bible, theology, worship, polity, exegesis. Uh, and so you have five. Um, and the Bible is more of a standardized test one. So that one is like, it just gives you multiple choice questions and you have to put the correct choice in, right? I did pretty well on that. Not gonna, not gonna toot my own horn too much, uh, but I was only beaten by my friend Joel, who I think got like a 96 or something on that test. I got like a 94. So that was, that was pretty good. Um, and uh, so I usually do well. Oh, that one trips a lot of people up, um, but it really requires you. The only way, easy way to pass that is to read the Bible and kind of understand how certain sections are written and stuff like that. Um, and that has no human contact in the sense of people coming in and, you know, grading how well you did it, right? They just feed it into a machine and your answers are what your answers are. I mean, they tell they t it tells you at the end, right? It's kind of like when you take the online driver's test, um, and you just kind of go through it and it tells you if you passed at the end or if you failed. Unlike the Bible exam, I failed my driver's test on the first time I took it. Um, so uh, the, the uh, online one anyway. Um, so uh, you have these, that's how that one works. But for the other ones, it actually requires teaching elders and uh, um, not leadership elders, gosh, ruling elders. Uh, thank you, self, for remembering teaching elders and ruling elders. So you get a teaching elder and a ruling elder, and both of them comment and write cr cr critique um, and stuff like that and grade these papers. And so that's for theology, worship, polity, and exegesis. Now, uh, I'll just go through each of them. Um, exegesis is uh, like biblical exegesis. And what that means is like understanding of the text, right? So you're usually given a text in uh, what, either Greek or uh Hebrew. Usually they do it off year. So if it's New Testament one year, it's an Old Testament passage in the next. I remember I had Galatians um, 3 for, for mine so many years ago. Um, and what they do is they give it to you and they ask you to uh, firstly point out in the Greek or in the Hebrew any sort of in interesting uh, language things that are going on behind the text. Now this is what the reason that we have this test test is for every uh, sermon or whatever we are supposed to. Uh, I guess we aren't supposed to, but it's it's good practice to read the actual text itself in, in Greek and Hebrew if you know those things, just to see if you see anything. Most of the time, it's way too boring or uh, way too niche to be interesting to a lot of people. So I rarely do kind of word studies. If you if you've watched my sermons, you probably know that. Um, but uh, but that's what you do, right? Just so you know the text, and then you answer. Uh, you know, this is what I found interesting and stuff like that. Um, and then the second part is like now, now like construct a theology out of this. So uh, like, what does this have to do? For instance, Galatians three, when it talks about the breaking down of barriers in between people and stuff like that. Uh, what does it have to say about the law that it uses such and such a word, right? And that's the answer that you give. Um, and then you, you know you write. I think it's about a, uh, you know, twelve hundred and fifty word essay on that. And they have that. You do that like 
two or three times, and that's that's the exegesis exam. And then um, you have polity, and polity usually presents you with some sort of question when it comes to how to go about doing something in a church con in a church context, right? Like what is the proper order for doing these things? And so you use the book of common, uh, not book of common worship, the book of order to cite these things. And you usually need to also give a theological backing for the reason that the church does these things. And so you'll just get a various thing like this happened in this, you're, you're in charge of a session meeting and this happens. This person asks this question, what, where do you find, where can you find the answer for it and like apply it to the situation? Right. And so that's, that's basically the point of the polity. It's not to make sure that you memorize the book of, uh, order because that's pretty much impossible except for all of our clerks out there, um, who have minds for, for stuff like this. But, uh, but it's just to know, like, this is where you go to find an answer, even if you don't know it off the top of your head. And so if you have a good polity teacher, that's, that's what they'll do. Um, and then you have worship, and worship is very similar. It's uh, the book of uh, common order as well, but unlike uh, the the polity issue, which focuses on government and discipline, the book of worship, uh, book of common or, or order, or book of order, also has a section just on worship, and the whole exam is on worship. So it's like, why do we do the things that we do in the church? Um, you know, where do you find? texts from the Bible to show that these are correct practices, right? Where do we get these types of uh, ideas from, uh, from the reform tradition? And what do they mean within the reform tradition, right? So that's what the, the worship exam is on. And the last one is the one that I graded, which is the theology exam. And the theology exam is uh, probably, I would say, the most difficult of, of all of them because it probably requires you to have the best information to know and to be really understanding of both the the place of the classical theology right which uh the church defines our church defines as anything from you know the early christian period up through the reformation period and modern theology which is stuff that's happened in the past 100 years or so right and so it asks questions right so it'll give you a scenario that will happen in a church context and they usually go uh, along the lines of something like this right it'll be like It'll be like, John, Lucy, and Mary are attenders at your young adult Bible study, right? Something like that. And you are talking about, uh, I'll just use Galatians, Galatians uh, 3. And you read the passage about how there is neither male nor female, neither slave nor Greek, neither Jew nor free in that passage. And John says, oh, I thought that these identities were important to us and still mark us as separate. And Mary says, well, I think that this means that these identities don't matter anymore and that the only thing that matters is that we are a Christian. And then Lucy says, well, I think both of you are wrong. I think that this means that we are supposed to be uh, Christian and these things and advocate in both of these spaces. How do you respond to this? Right. That, that's like a, a question that you would get. And um, then it'll it'll say, like, first, write like a 750. No first write like a 1250 word essay or something like that on uh on the reform tradition's understanding of what it means to be a christian and what it means to uh follow uh, and what it means to have your identity right it'll, it'll be something like that using and the, each one is different so it'll be like using classical sources using the book of uh, uh the book of confessions uh, and then kind of using the book of confessions and classical sources and modern sources. And it'll give three different questions and they'll all be different, right? But so it'll be like, but by using our uh, book of confessions for this question, right? And so the person has to go through and talk about the history of Reformed theology, right? How do we view, view the person in light of who people are as sinful and things like that in the place of God? Do our individual identities matter, right? And you would, you pull from, and they also ask that you pull from scripture as well. So you're pulling from texts of scripture, you're pulling from texts from the book of confessions and you form an essay. And then at the end, you write kind of a pastoral response where you go, John, I think this is true about your position, but Mary, I think this is true about your position, but Lucy, I think this is true about your position, but, and you kind of roll it up into like what you think about it. And we don't really judge the theological readers are told not really to judge so much the theology, although that can be a part of it. Um, it's mainly to make sure that they're fulfilling the requirements of the exam itself. But sometimes like, you know, they in not really caring about theology that much or focusing on one area, they don't uh, actually adhere to the standards and things like that. The 
ordination exams in general are pretty good. Uh, I don't have as big of a problem with them as many people. I do think that they can be gamed, right? Like someone who just watched this video could tell just from this, like how they can formulate an answer to a question such as that, right? And get it to just hit all the marks without really believing any of it, which is kind of my problem, which is why it really should fall to CPM and to uh, elders and deacons and others appointed by the churches that call pastors to really grill their pastors on theology and stuff like this, because a lot of people will slip through um, and uh, and not really be all that great. So that's, that's you know, not an answer to your question, because unfortunately, I'm kind of bound by what I can say, but hopefully that kind of gives and sheds some light on what organization exams kind of look like. So uh, good question. I will see all of you next Tuesday for our next Theologue. Have a wonderful weekend and hope you guys can all join us on Sunday. Peace out.